Have you ever wondered why planes don't fly over the Pacific Ocean? It's a question that often pops up in conversations, especially among those with a fondness for travel and a curiosity for the unknown. This intriguing question is not just a passing fancy, but a riddle that has captured the imagination of countless travelers and aviation enthusiasts across the globe. The vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean stretching out over the horizon is a sight to behold. Yet it seems that our winged metal birds prefer to give this colossal body of water a wide berth. But why? What could possibly prompt these high-flying machines to shy away from the Pacific? As you may have guessed, there's no shortage of myths and misconceptions swirling around this topic. Some say it's due to the presence of the infamous Bermuda Triangle in the Pacific, while others believe it's because planes fear the wrath of the mighty sea monsters lurking beneath the ocean surface. There are even those who argue that it's all about avoiding the magnetic anomalies that supposedly abound in the Pacific. But are these the real reasons? Is there any truth to these claims? Or are they merely the stuff of wild imagination and speculation? Could it be that the answer lies not in the realm of the fantastical, but in the realm of science and practicality? The truth, as you might expect, is far more complex and fascinating than these myths would have you believe. It's a tale of geography, physics, and human ingenuity. A tale that takes us on a journey through the intricacies of aviation and the challenges of navigating our planet's largest ocean. So, are you ready to embark on this journey? Are you prepared to unravel the mystery and uncover the truth? If so, then fasten your seatbelts, sit back, and get ready for a fascinating flight of discovery. So, let's dive into the facts and find out the real reasons why planes avoid the Pacific Ocean. Firstly, planes actually do fly over the Pacific, but not in the way you might think. To understand this, we need to delve into the concept of the Great Circle Route. Picture a globe. Now, imagine you're trying to connect two points on that globe with a single line. The line you draw if you could slice through the center of the Earth, would form the shortest possible distance between those two points. This, in essence, is the Great Circle route. But here's the kicker. When you flatten that globe into a map, that straight line suddenly appears curved. This is due to the distortion caused by trying to represent a three-dimensional object in two dimensions. So, if you've ever looked at a flight map and thought, why is this plane going in a curved path? Now you know. It's not taking a scenic detour. It's following a great circle route, the quickest way to get from point A to point B. Now let's apply this to our Pacific puzzle. Many flights from, say, the United States to Asia follow a seemingly curved path over the Pacific. On a flat map, these routes can look a little off, as if the planes are going out of their way to avoid the ocean. But in reality, they're traversing the shortest possible route, the great circle route, which just happens to look curved when flattened onto a map. This might also explain why some flights appear to go up over Alaska and down into Asia. It's not because pilots enjoy the view of the Alaskan wilderness. Rather, it's due to these great circle routes, which when combined with other factors like wind patterns and fuel efficiency, dictate the paths planes follow. So, next time you're on a Trans-Pacific flight and you see the curved flight path on the screen, Remember, you're not going the long way around. You're actually on the shortest route, courtesy of the Great Circle. But that's not the only reason. There's more to it. Another reason is all about fuel efficiency and wind patterns. Now let's delve into some aerodynamics and meteorology to understand this better. Airlines are always on the lookout to save fuel. It's not just about cutting costs. It's also about reducing carbon emissions and being more sustainable. So, they're constantly working out the most efficient routes for their flights. And when we talk about efficiency in aviation, it's not just about the shortest distance. The wind plays a huge role too. So, let's talk about the Pacific Ocean. It's vast, it's beautiful, but it's also home to some strong and unpredictable wind patterns. And these winds can have a big impact on a plane's fuel consumption. You see, when a plane is flying with the wind behind it, it's like having an invisible hand giving it a push. It can fly faster and use less fuel. But when a plane is flying into the wind, it's like trying to walk against a strong gust. It's harder work, it's slower, and it uses more fuel. Now let's talk about the jet stream. 
This is a band of strong winds that circles the Earth way up in the atmosphere where planes fly. In the northern hemisphere where most of the world's landmass is, these winds generally blow from west to east. So, flights going in that direction can get a helpful push from the jet stream, saving time and fuel. But when you're flying over the Pacific, it's a different story. The jet stream can be unpredictable. Sometimes it can help, sometimes it can hinder. And when you're in the middle of the largest ocean on Earth with nowhere to land for thousands of miles, you don't want to be caught in a situation where you're using more fuel than you need to. And then, there's the matter of safety. When you're flying over vast expanses of ocean, safety becomes a critical concern. Now, imagine cruising at 35,000 feet in the sky over the Pacific Ocean, the largest and deepest ocean on our planet. One might wonder, what happens if there's an emergency? For aircraft, the Pacific Ocean presents a unique challenge. While it's a magnificent sight to behold, it's also an expanse of water with very few places to safely land in case of an emergency. This concern significantly influences the flight paths airlines choose. In the aviation world, there's a principle known as ETOPS, which stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards. This set of regulations, enforced by the Federal Aviation Administration or FAA, governs the maximum distance a twin-engine airplane can fly from a suitable airport for an emergency landing. For example, under 180-minute ETOPS rules, an airplane must always be within 180 minutes flight time of an airport. Therefore, flight paths are carefully planned to ensure that, even in the event of an engine failure, the airplane can safely reach an airport within the ETOPS time frame. This is why, when crossing the Pacific, planes often fly along specific routes known as tracks, which change daily based on weather and wind patterns. These tracks keep planes within range of suitable airports on islands like Hawaii or Guam. In addition, airplanes are equipped with a host of safety features and redundancies designed to handle a wide range of emergencies. Pilots undergo rigorous training to handle these situations, and air traffic control is always on standby to assist. So while the thought of an emergency over the Pacific might seem nerve-wracking, rest assured that every possible precaution is taken to ensure passenger safety. In conclusion, the vastness of the Pacific Ocean doesn't simply mean that planes can't fly over it. It means that they must do so with utmost caution, following carefully planned paths and adhering to stringent safety regulations. So, it's a combination of factors that determine a plane's route. So, in summary, why don't planes fly over the Pacific Ocean? Let's glide back through the clouds of our discussion. We embarked on this journey with a question that seemed straightforward, but as we delved deeper, we discovered that the world of aviation is a complex web of decisions, each one intricately connected to the other. First, we found our bearings with the Great Circle Route. This isn't some mystical path in the sky, but a scientific principle that guides pilots to their destinations in the shortest possible time. It's the closest thing to a straight line on our spherical planet, bending over the top of the globe and often veering away from the most direct path as seen on flat maps. That's why a flight from New York to Tokyo might take a detour over Alaska rather than crossing the Pacific Ocean directly. Then we soared into the realm of fuel efficiency and wind patterns. The Pacific Ocean is a vast and windy expanse the winds that blow across its surface can either be a plane's best friend or worst enemy, depending on their direction. Pilots carefully consider these winds when planning their routes, aiming to ride tailwinds for a boost in speed and fuel efficiency, while avoiding headwinds that would slow them down and consume more fuel. Finally, we touch down on the topic of safety and emergency landings. Over the Pacific, the lack of nearby airports for emergency landings is a significant concern. If an issue arises mid-flight, pilots need to know they can get the plane on the ground safely and quickly, and that's a lot tougher when you're in the middle of the world's largest ocean. So the next time you're on a flight, you'll know why the plane might not be taking the route you expected. Thanks for joining us on this sky-high adventure.